Tusumsanjidamjiungujangsa Chene Gunji Chebo Wanjur Chujong Pejin Jamrela Nanjur Tiji Kubindu Don Rame Tuji Jong Wanjur Chudu Jagun Wawo Be Manjung Dunga Sonju Tempa Bebe Chen Chinji Vesir Jave Nyu Guzo Tichu Tempe Jang Zeng So Wande Yung Ten Sanji Gunda Nyam Na Yang Gardin Sanji Le Jang Pa Kwa Yi Zawe Lame Shabla Shase Ne Da Son Rove Lam Na Chiu La Chong Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome back to our uh, discussion on uh, three principles. Yesterday, we have been completed the first two, which is the, uh, the renunciation and the bodhicitta. Now, this morning, uh, number three, the principle, which is the uh, profound view or the correct view, Tibetan call Yang Takpe Tawa. Yang Takpa means actually Yang and the Takpa, and we use sometimes the Takpa, but there are two different terms, Takpa and the Yang Takpa. Takpa is just a pure, pure, but the Yang Takpa is <clears throat> completely free from mistakes, and sometimes we can use a complete purified. <coughs> Here, Tsongkhapa says, Niluk Tobe Shirap, Medena, Ninjung Changju Semna, Komche Jang, Sibe Zawa, Chuber Minute, Tishir Tender Tobe Tablambe. If you, if you lack the wisdom that realizes the absolute truth or nature, although you have a generated renunciation and a bodhicitta, but still you will be incapable of cutting through conditioned existence at its root. Therefore, exert yourself in the methods for realizing interdependence. Interdependence, Tibetan word tendel, tendel, which means every circumstances or anything that in this world or in the phenomena, nothing can be uh, survived without depending to, to other circumstances. Let's say when we talk about the cause and the result, Tibetan words ju and ndigu. Ju is a cause, and the devil is a result, and it's a result. But when you use the name Ju or cause, because of the result, then you name Ju or cause. If Ju, the phenomena of Ju or cause, is nothing to do with the result, interdependent, uh, completely independent, and are not necessary to rely on other factor, then we don't need to call Ju. It is not due, it is not cause. Because this phenomena, the cause, does not depend on the result. As, as well as the result is independent, because the result does not, come, does not depend on the cause. But it's not that. It's not that the situation, because the cause is very much dependent on the result. And the result is very much dependent on the cause. So it cannot survive independently without uh, without dependent to each other. So that is the entire meaning of interdependence or the tendel in Tibetan. Nagarjuna says, <coughs> um, um, you know, right? Hmm? Lamala, you know, right? Okay. Zawa Shirup. 
very clearly uh, stated. Tianjin Zhengzhong, Mayimbe, Chuanga Yoba Maino. Teacher Tony Mayimbe, Chuanga Yoba Maino. I just read in Tibetan because, in case maybe some of you thought maybe it just come from your mouth. No, it's from the Nagarjuna. So, therefore, <laughs> which means there is no single um, the phenomena that is uh, not interdependent arising. Therefore, all the phenomena are empty. And uh, as well as Nagarjuna says, thinking the one Jung the Yawai, Sungin Joji, Jeva Samunde, the state of and interdependence is the, the treasure of the Buddha's teaching. The treasure, the Tibetan word the is the treasure. So, which means for the practice of a ground, the interdependence is needed. For the practice of the path, interdependence is there. And in order to achieve the fruition, and the interdependence is there. So therefore, inter interdependence is the, <clears throat> the key issue to the Mahayana view, Mahayana meditation, and the Mahayana conduct. If one lack understanding or the realization or the knowledge of interdependence, then one cannot get, go through the five paths and the ten bhumis. So therefore, our practice, even the daily practice, like doing prostration, doing gora, chanting the sadhanas, reciting uh, the mantras, the understanding or the knowledge of interdependence is the need to be applied together. Therefore, everything is arises from interdependence. From the interdependence, we talk about nirvana. Because of interdependence, we talk about samsara. Because of interdependence, and we talk about the every notion, up, down, left, and right, you and me, and the right and the wrong, and the big and the small, everything, everything, the function of every, the relative, relative function is very much depend on the, on the tendril, the interdependence. So, when we talk about the shunyata, emptiness, Tibetan word, the tongbani, the shunyata. Shunyata is not something that we are negating everything. No, no, no. So we, we never say there is no nirvana, there is no samsara. If you keep on saying no samsara, no nirvana, that's not the concept or the idea of emptiness or shunyata at all. The shunyata means that is something we understand clearly or we have a, a very basic knowledge of everything is arising from interdependence. It arises, yet lack of a solid. Arises everything, yet not inherent existence. Because of this, and we say, all the phenomena is empty. Tibetan word Tongpa and Tongpa Ni, two terms you must understand. Tongpa is just empty, like an empty cup, empty house, right? So empty cup means there is no water, there is no tea, so just the cup is there, but there is no water and the tea inside the cup. So you use empty cup. House, no things, no people inside the house, and you call empty house. Nobody is there, so empty house. But that is not the, uh, the real concept of Shunyata or Tongpa Nyi. That is just a Tongpa. But when we use a Tongpa Nyi, Nyi is a very profound term, which means everything is there. Samsara is there, Nirvana is there, Divine is there. The six realms are there, right? Everything is there, yet absence of its solidity, absence of reality, absence of inherent existence. 
why they are arise, why you see all kinds of things, why you see the object, why you hear the sound, why you smell the, the, the smell, why you are able to perceive all this because of emptiness, because of interdependence. The power of interdependence is there. Because of this, we are able to perceive. And we are able to label say this is a right and this is a wrong. This is a sweet, this is a sour. This is a right and this is a wrong. All these notions that you are able to, able to make it because interdependence. So this is the meaning of Tongpa Ni. Why I am here uh, explained uh, uh, more about this because the concept or understanding of uh, emptiness is very uh, dangerous if, you, if your knowledge goes, uh, goes too wrong. That's why Nagarjuna says, Tongba ni la tanya na shira chuna pungwanju. Tongba ni la tanya na. If you perceive or understand the meaning of emptiness wrongly, then there is a danger. This danger is most dangerous, most dangerous to your path. So therefore, I give you another ex simple example. Tibetan word, rang xin and rang xin ni. There are two terms. Those, the great, highly realized being uh, interpreters in the past, the Lotsawa. So, from their wisdom. So, they are very beautiful and they're very profound. Rang Xin is a nature. Like, someone is very uh, aggressive. If someone is very angry, easy to get angry, someone. So, this is your temporary nature because everybody runs away from you. They don't want to get too close to you, sir, because he is always angry. I don't want to get you know, close to him, because if he comes towards you, then you take another way, right? So <laughs> uh, you you feel something. I'm not really uh, comfortable when you see her or him who who is someone aggressive. So you will say, oh, we can't change him or her because this is her nature, and someone is uh, very much talkative. And then he's, oh, he's a nature. This is a his or her nature. So we can't change him. But it doesn't mean that you can't change him. You can change by training, by practicing, or by thorough training. This individual, uh, his or her nature can be changed. That's the rangshin, but that's not rangshin ni. That's a his or her rangshin or nature. That is a his or her temporary attitude the nature of his or her attitude, it's a rangshin, it's a nature, but can be changed under circumstances. But if you say that is a his or her rangshin ni, then cannot change. So therefore, when you call rangshin ni, the individual's rangshin ni is his or her na very true nature. That is their mind is always clear, always brilliant, always free from any the negative substances. So our mind is pure, never defiled, never diluted. Our mind is basically or innately very clear and pure. That is sentient beings rangshin ni, which this natural, never changes under any circumstances, any influences, but this very true nature, Rangshini, never changes. So that is the, you see the, prof, the profound word Ni, so it gives you a profound understanding. So you can understand how helpful with the practice of emptiness and the Shunyata because if you dissociate this knowledge, the knowledge or the understanding of emptiness, and then simply or merely practicing compassion, loving kindness, and the relative bodhicitta can be deteriorated after some time by negative, uh, strong negative uh, influence, you can change. Because 
for some days you are very compassionate and you are practicing loving kindness, you are a very loving person and a very compassionate person towards the other beings, but because of the lack of the understanding or the realization of emptiness, so this relative bodhicitta, relative compassion, loving, relative loving kindness cannot help you to overcome your shortcomings. So therefore, once your relative bodhicitta, compassion, loving kindness, associate or mingle or practice inseparable with the, with the emptiness, then these compassion, loving kindness, and the relative bodhicitta can never deteriorate. In fact, they multiplies or increase. So that's because of the power of realization of emptiness. So therefore, the interdependence and the shunyata is the key point and the key important for the practitioners. That's why bodhisattvas, until they reach to the path of a sin, Tibetan word Tonglam, those bodhisattvas we call the bodhisattvas of the, the ordinariness, the ordinary bodhisattvas. When you reach to the part of a sin, Tonglam, then we call those bodhisattvas the Arya bodhisattvas, noble bodhisattvas. Why noble? Tibetan word Papa, Pagli Changsem, the noble bodhisattvas. Why you call bodhisattvas the Arya bodhisattvas or the noble bodhisattvas? Those bodhisattvas now able to mingle or make an inseparability the relative bodhicitta and the compassion, loving kindness with the, the realization of shunyata. So if you analyze as an ordinary being who <coughs> has a problem <coughs> with our confusions, Nyanmomba, let's say if I have a problem with, with the anger, as a practitioner or Mayana practitioner who is uh, trying to apply the corrective view in a meditation, but there's no capacity or I am incapable to see anger is empty. Very difficult. The right from the beginning, you can't say, oh, your anger is empty, not truly existent. So practice that. Okay, I try my best. When anger arrives, it's empty. No anger. You try to combat or negate empty, but it gets worse, the situation, actually, sometimes, because then you get more pressure and the sweats. And, you know, <laughs> it's very difficult. You get more restless. And then sometimes you go crazy. Say that there is the angry. Why you deny? Say there's no angry. There's no anger. It, there is the anger, and in fact, there are more powerful anger. So you deny there's no anger. So that sort of a complication arises, right? So instead of that, instead of looking directly into the anger circumstances, so you think of this interdependence, cause and effect. Where does anger? arise and how. So anger is very much, it depends on the cause and the effect, cause and the condition. Anger cannot survive or exist independently. It, it needs the cause and the condition. Someone who irritates you, so this is the cause and the condition. And myself, a cause and the condition, because from the beginning of this samsara, I'm so familiar with it, and a lack of diligence, lack of wisdom, so therefore, I can't see through what is the anger, and I couldn't get through the anger. So there are so many things, like, so therefore, anger arises. So anger has no power to, to stand or to exist independently. So, so if you apply this analysis, thorough analysis, then slowly, gradually, you can bring down the power of anger. Right? So this is our beginner process to overcome anger um, uh, the wisely. Nagarjuna says, 
Omula Ranavale Omar is sitting on. Jawa Shebe and Jibashe Jibashebe, Medashe, Medan Yil and Joseph, and Bishop and Tobajo. Those who understand or realize the what is born or birth, then from there you can move to the understanding or the knowledge of what is cessation. The cessation come from its, its birth, right? So something need to be, need to be uh, take a birth, then it leads to the, to the death, which is the cessation. If you analyze carefully these two notions, and it leads to the understanding of impermanence. So you will see, oh, I was born, right? I was born with the cause and the condition and the karma, so I was born. Now I'm surviving, but I'm aging day to day, yes. This is because of I'm very much dependent on the cause and the condition, which shows I'm not independent. And eventually, under any circumstances, by old age or any other unexpected circumstances, so I will die. So that is also because of the, the cause and the condition. So everything is impermanent. I don't need to be worried about so much, right? So I have to be much more relaxed. This is a very natural of a, the phenomena. So it helps you to reduce your stress, unnecessary stress, and the needless anxiety where you can practice very comfortably and very simply and very joyfully. So that's why Nagarjuna says, Jiwa shebe, jiwa she, jiwa shebe, mida she. Mida nilan ju shebe. If you are totally realize the characteristic of the impermanence, tambe chun atokajur, then you can realize the ultimate Dhamma, which is shunyata. So, what you can understand from this statement of Nagarjuna, to me, very clear, this shows or this indicates this practice of or the, or the understanding or the knowledge of interdependence is nothing to do with the philosophy, is nothing to do with the scholar, is nothing to do with the something that the extraordinary uh, training of your mind. This is our daily life. If you base on the knowledge of interdependence, I am very sure eventually you will get a very freedom of free individual. What we need is we need to be free from disturbances, difficulties, unwanted situation. We call this as a freedom, isn't it? So that you can survive, that you can exist freely, that without interruption, without hindrances, without obstacle, that without the disturbances. So this is what we call ultimate state, where you can learn this from the right, from the beginning of our daily life. So every situation, when you are happy, think of interdependence. When you are unhappy, think of interdependence. Not only think, analyze, investigate, train with the interdependence. So eventually, then you will be free from all these, the negative or the disturbing circumstances. So that's why interdependence is needed in our daily life. Chandrakirti. Mm. He stated in the, the Madhyamika um, Avatar Nama, Umana Juba Shijam. He stated, So Suchi Wonam Netokichin, Meto Nandru Panam Trojur, Tonam Lopra Churba Kaimba, Number Chuba and Divul Kenam Song. So Suchi Wonam Netokichin, Ordinary beings bound tightly by thoughts. Okay, now this is very important words. What does it mean? Ordinary beings, the bound tightly by 
concept and the thoughts. It does not mean the concept itself is a bad or the thoughts themselves is a bad, but as long as you grasp to them solidly, then the disturbance is there. Then effectiveness is there. Otherwise, if you just let it be, let it arise and let it go. So the thoughts themselves does not, do not disturb you. And the concepts themselves do not disturb you unless you hold them solidly, tightly, with the strong grasp. That, that's the the Chandrakirti stated why they are diluted their mind because of you are hold on to very tightly, very solidly. Therefore, the thoughts and the concepts become your disturbance. Chandrakirti does not blame on thoughts and the concepts. <coughs> Never. Those great Mahasiddhas in India, none of them None of them blame on the concept and the emotion and uh, the uh, thoughts. Never. That's why the second state, first, mito nanjur panam trojur. Mito, the directly translate is the thoughtless. But it does not mean thoughtless. What does it mean? Let thoughts arise, but don't hold on to. Let it arise and let it go naturally. And uh, so then, Chandrakirti says, this is the yogi, meto nanjurpa. Those who does not hold on to concept and the emotion, thoughts solidly, tightly, yet thoughts and the concepts, emotion arise. But they never disturb you. That state if you reach that state, so Nagarjuna, uh, Chandrakirti call this individual is yogi, mito nanjurpa. Mito nanjurpa nam, troll jurushing. Troll jurushing means the individuals who understand clearly thoughts and the concepts arise, yet that these are free from inherent existence. Let it arise and let it go. You don't hold on too tightly, solidly. Then Chandrakirti says, So these individuals liberated from the confu confusion. Now, third verse, <coughs> Chandrakirti continues. Hmm. By practicing, of shunyata, then <clears throat> if you are able to survive with the emotion, with the concepts, and with the thoughts, yet these do not disturb you. You can have them. This is nothing wrong. Yeah, nothing wrong. You can have them, but make sure these do not influence you or make you change. Then he says, fourth state, fourth verse says, that's the great result of your analysis of shunyata. And then at the same time, what you can understand from these states, sometimes we have a misconcept or misbelief or misunderstand with the word or word of a yogi does not mean the yogi because only knowledge or understanding of a transformation. But Chandrakiti says you are already yogi as long as the, these negative circumstances do not disturb you. You are yogi. You are free. Right? So these four verses is a very essential teaching of Chandrakirti, very helpful to us if we carry on our practice along with these four verses from the Chandrakirti. That's why here Tsongkhapa says, exert yourself, therefore, in the methods for realizing interdependence. What we need is we need, 
we have to be very capable to cut through conditioned existence at its root. Right? Tibetan word sipe zawa. Sip, sipa is the samsara. The root of samsara, kore zawa. The root of samsara is what? Ignorance. What is ignorance? The ignorance is that you are incapable to work with it. You don't know the idea. You don't have an idea what's going on, what to do. So therefore, it's given here a very good idea and a very good path and a method to how to get rid of or cut the root of a samsara. The root of a samsara is ignorance. So in order to cut, in order to cut the root of a samsara, one should gain the knowledge of interdependence. So without the gaining experience or the knowledge of interdependence, this individual cannot go directly into the realization of emptiness. So the processes, the steps are very important that we need to apply in everyday life. Nothing to do with the sessions, morning session, after se afternoon session or evening session, but it's a something very much our, our life which need to uh, uh, need to uh, um, go with these the profound understanding of interdependence. Relatively, we do practice like a devotion. Relatively, we do practice loving kindness and relative co co compassion, relative bodhicitta, practice of impermanence, but then. What you understand is that these practices is not a direct contradict to the, the root of samsara, which is ignorance, right? Because nobody will be liberated fully when you practice of a relative bodhicitta alone, the without the, uh, the uh, realization of a shunyata or emptiness, then the simply practice in relative loving kindness and compassion, one cannot be enlightened at all. Therefore, the Dharma Kriti, Shuji Tokwa. He says, Chamsu Monan Gamichi, Shindu Nyeba Sajumi, Nikunti, it's our Tianji Sodoi. Chamsu Monan Gamichi, Chamso, Cham is loving kindness, So, etc., which means compassion, the devotion, or the relative bodhicitas are not directly contradict to the, the root of the samsara. When you practice, loving kindness and the compassion, you have a sense of uh, like a strong attachment to the object, sentient beings as an object, and uh, yourself as a practitioner of a bodhicitta, relative bodhicitta and the compassion, loving kindness. And uh, you have a strong attachment and uh, hold on to the practice of uh, compassion itself and the uh, loving kindness itself and the relative bodhicitta itself. So that all the notions you have a sense of uh, a touch, they are truly existing, existing, and uh, existent. And you have a true uh, kind of attachment to the, these three inherently existence. On this base, and you are practicing, right? right? Because you saw someone who is really in trouble, then you want to help him or her to get rid of their problem. So with that sense, you understand this individual is truly there. His or her pain and the suffering or misery is truly there. And with that perspective, and you are trying to apply bodhicitta and compassion. So this is not the idea of the shunyata at all. But the real shunyata or real bodhicitta, ultimate bodhicitta and compassion is one should understand or fully realize the sentient beings in not truly existed. Their pain and uh, miseries not truly existed. But because of the power of ignorance, so they hold on to the pain as a pain, suffering as a suffering. So that because of the dualistic mental attitude, so as a result, you are still wandering in this samsara. To get rid of that, one should apply the shunyata, inseparability, inseparability of the the relative compassion with the, the shunyata. So that this practice is a direct contradict to the root of a samsara. So therefore, with this practice, can eliminate the root of the samsara. So you need gross 
knowledge or understanding of why sentient beings wandering in this samsara. This is very important. You can you simply practice compassion, loving kindness, with the sense of uh, knowing their the suffering is it truly there, their pain is it truly there. This will not lead you to the omniscient state of Buddhahood at all, because this is very temporary compassion, temporary loving kindness. So you should understand why they are in the pain, why they are in the state of a pain and the suffering and the misery. Why do, do they have? Why they have? Why do they have the miserable life? Because of the ignorance, right? Because of the ignorance, because sentient beings are being ignorant, therefore they are going through difficult time and a difficult life. They are suffering. They are miserable because of the power of a dualistic mental attitude, because of the power of the power of the ignorance, because of a lack of understanding of shunyata or emptiness, because the lack of because of lack of awakening their mind, then they are in the state of suffering and the pain. So you see, this, this knowledge is related to the knowledge of a shunyata or reality or absolute truth, absolutely or in the state of a ultimate. None of them suffered, none of them wandering in the samsara. So if they awaken the mind, or open their wisdom, pain is gone, suffering is gone. Therefore, it's worthy to be compassionate. Because of this, I should generate compassion and loving kindness to help them not in order to solve temporary problem, but ultimately, they, none of them have suffered, so I just let them awaken the mind. I just let them have the knowledge and the wisdom. So this is my ultimate benefit and my ultimate help to them to awaken their mind. So understanding or the knowledge of shunyata leads the compassion and the loving kindness in a more profound way. If you analyze your attitude as a practitioner, you can, you can, you can uh, observe, see that you are so fearful with the temporary problems you are so fearful with the temporary illness, right? So when you hear somebody is ill, then you think, oh, I may be ill tomorrow. So for this, you spend a lot of money, right? Medication, if you are sick, you get help from the doctor, and you are so fearful. But you are never fearful with your, the root of some child, never. So this is not so wise, isn't it? Because of our temporary sicknesses, illnesses, all these, the relative, um, the negative circumstances are all arise from the, our very, the fundamental powerful ignorance. Once you get rid of or cut off this root of a samsara, then these illnesses and, and all the negative, the circumstances in our life will be gone. No more existed. So therefore, to be awakened mind and to be wise, a good practitioner means we have to work for our fundamental, the, uh, the powerful uh, ignorance to get rid of that, right? to be fearful with that and wish that when can I get rid of these and I will spend all my money for, for get rid of this powerful ignorance and I will work very hard until you fully get rid of this ignorance. So that attitude, if you apply when you do Dhamma practice, then you can see the benefit and the result swiftly. Okay, so this is a brief introduction of what is corrective view.